Good, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We're going to wait a few more minutes to allow some additional attendees to join us before we begin this meeting.
Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for attending the Bureau of Land Management's Rio Benito Falls Acquisition Virtual Public Meeting. My name is Jillian Aragon and I'm a Public Affairs Specialist for the Bureau of Land Management. The Rio Benito Falls Acquisition Project lies within the BLM Roswell Field Office boundary, which is located in the southeastern portion of the state of New Mexico. I would like to go over a few housekeeping items before we get started. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. This meeting is also being live streamed on the BLM New Mexico Facebook page. Comments received via the BLM New Mexico Facebook page will not be considered as formal public comments for this project. We ask that all attendees remain respectful to the audience by not using profanity when providing questions or statements. If you have technical questions about the project, process, or analysis, please feel free to utilize the Q&A chat feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If we are not able to provide responses to your questions during today's meeting, we will post responses on the project's e-planning website after the conclusion of today's meeting. We again ask that you remain respectful to other members of the audience and not use spam or profanity while using the Q&A chat function. During this presentation, all participants' audio and video streaming will be turned off. Once the presentation is complete, we will begin the question and answer session and then the public statement portion of this meeting. Additional instructions on how you can participate will be given once we get to that point. During this meeting, we will refer to the Bureau of Land Management as the BLM. I would like to introduce several people from the BLM Roswell Field Office that are here with us today as panelists. This team will be available to answer the audience's questions relating to the EA. We have Mr. Chuck Schmidt, the field manager for the Roswell Field Office, Ruben Sanchez, the assistant field manager for BLM Roswell, and we also have Glenn Garnand and the BLM Roswell interdisciplinary team with us today. I will turn the mic over to Mr. Chuck Schmidt so that he can further introduce the purpose of today's meeting and provide some background information. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm already having technical difficulties. I can't uh, turn my camera on. Um, oh, there it goes. So welcome to, welcome to COVID era, folks. Uh, here we are uh, attempting to do a meeting that we would very much prefer to have on site up in the area and uh, in person. Uh, but I got to tell you, there, there's a lot of folks behind the scene here that has allowed us to bring this technology to the forefront, and we're really hoping for a good experience. And uh, so, so thanks to all those behind the scenes. Um, Little, little introduction of myself, Chuck Schmidt. I've been the field manager here uh, in the Roswell field office for about uh, a little over 10 years. And uh, Lincoln County, New Mexico in our Port Stanton uh, NCA, and Snowy River NCA is a very important place to us. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, holding this, this public meeting tonight uh, to discuss a real opportunity we have in front of us uh, to acquire these uh, 100 acres adjacent to the NCA. What we're going to be doing is going uh, through uh, the draft environmental assessment that I hope everybody that's on has had an opportunity to pull up from our e-planning website. If you're not familiar with that, you're going to hear that quite a bit tonight. Uh, the e-planning website is where we're asking folks to go uh, actually post their comments that open today, uh, as well as uh, download any of the drafts and, and uh, print that out, whatever you folks need to do uh, as we work through it. Any questions along the way, please let us know. Uh, I've got that staff here to help us out. Um, so once again, thanks for taking your time with us this evening. Uh, hopefully this goes well. You'll probably catch us on a few faux pas, but uh, I think it's gonna be fun. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over and, and let Ruben introduce himself to you as well. 
And good evening, everybody. We really appreciate uh, everybody joining us tonight, as as Chuck said. And um, I just like to second what what Chuck said earlier. Also, this this project is very near and dear to our heart. And the uh, the NCA and the Rio Bonito Falls is is very special to us. So we really appreciate everybody uh, taking the time uh, this evening to join us. Um, also, wanted to mention um, that we do have the Roswellfield Office interdisciplinary team. Uh, available for you. Uh, this is a number of um, ologists and specialists uh, with a lot of background and knowledge and uh, we're, we have those uh, individuals at our disposal tonight uh, to help answer some questions. So I think that's also a positive thing for us. So with that, um, I'd like to go ahead and turn it back over to our moderator, uh, Jill, and she will continue with uh, tonight's presentation. Thanks, Ruben and Chuck. We will now discuss the agenda for today's meeting. From 6 to 6.30 p.m., we will have the presentation. Only the presenter's microphone will be active. You can, commit, you can submit questions and comments via the Q&A chat function during this time. However, we will be unable to answer these questions live until we get to the next session. From 6.30 to 7.15, we will have the live question and answer portion. During this time, we'll be accepting written or verbal comments from the audience. The BLM will address previously submitted questions first and then open up the audience's communication line so that they can receive additional questions. From 7.15 to 8 p.m., we will have our public statement session. When we get to this point, we will begin accepting formal statements regarding the draft environmental assessment. If you are attending this meeting online, I would like to direct your attention to your Zoom screen. The Q&A box at the bottom will be open throughout the meeting so that the audience can provide written questions. Later, during the live Q&A session, we will open up the audience's microphones so that verbal questions can be provided to the BLM team. Please take a minute to read the instructions on the slide. Written questions, you can click the Q&A button and type your questions. For verbal questions, you could press the raise hand function or if you're joining us by telephone, you could press star nine. The moderator will announce your name and then when you are ready, you can raise your hand and unmute yourself and you can begin speaking. Please note that your main source of information from BLM about this project is the environmental assessment. During this meeting, our panelists will continue to refer to information that is provided within the environmental assessment. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and will be made publicly available on the BLM's e-planning website. This meeting is also being live streamed on the BLM New Mexico's Facebook page. The Q&A chat function will be used for technical questions about the EA and project. If some questions are not able to be addressed during the meeting, the BLM will post responses to your questions on the project's e-planning page after today's meeting. Chuck will now begin the presentation. Okay, folks, uh, once again, really appreciate you uh, joining us this evening. Uh, we're really looking forward to this presentation and, and it's important to know, I really want you, you know, folks to, to go download that EA if you have not seen it. Uh, if, if you, for some reason you're having problems with that website, uh, let my staff or myself know and we'll make sure and get you a copy. Because uh, this is a draft document uh, that we put together uh, based on our best knowledge, but it has been in-house. So, so we very much value uh, you as the, as the public uh, and, and some of your ideas. If, if there's something in there that uh, you would like to elaborate on or or clarify or make a comment to, that's why we're here tonight. And so uh, I just kind of give you a little bit of background. There's a ton of information on your screen right now and I'm gonna try and just uh, quickly move through that. But we have been in discussion with the private landowner uh, at least since 2018. Uh, 
to to purchase some some uh, property al along and adjacent to the national conservation area. For those of you that may not be familiar with it, Congress uh, in 2008 or 2000, early late 2009 uh, turned this uh, special area that we we just re referred to as the Fort Stanton uh, ACEC area of critical environmental concern. Congress recognized it for the importance. Uh, a lot of it was uh, subterranean, the cave features there, but it's also just a wonderful place on the surface as well. And so very much a special area. And so this 100 acres being adjacent next to it uh, leads itself well to uh, BLM management. Interestingly, uh, going back to some of our planning documents, if you're not familiar with that, uh, each field office in the Bureau of Land Management has to have a resource management plan and what that's doing is trying to give about a 20 years uh, snapshot of uh, general guidelines and management of the field office area. And so back in 1997, when ours was published, uh, this was actually identified as, as a parcel uh, that, that should be looked at for acquisition if it ever became available. We've written subsequent plans uh, since then. Uh, we, we wrote a plan for the ACEC. We've also written a plan uh, when it became an NCA and uh, all these plans since 1997 have actually uh, indicated the BLM's willingness to acquire this property. So what's that mean to you? And what's that mean to us? So we're, we're uh, going to be utilizing public resources to acquire this. And so part of that is we have to write a document and that is uh, what you folks are reviewing tonight and that is an environmental assessment under the NEPA laws, National Environment Policy Act. And so that's what's bringing us here. And uh, we're opening up a 30 day comment period. We very much wanna hear from you because we don't know all the answers and we would uh, definitely like to hear from you. So with that, I'm gonna turn that over to Ruben Sanchez and he's gonna kind of dig in a little deeper uh, on the process itself. All right, thank you, Chuck. I really appreciate that. So um, I'm just gonna, like Chuck said, I'm kind of, I'm gonna elaborate a little bit more on uh, what we're kind of looking at here. And uh, what you see on your screen, um, this is a map of the proposed area uh, that we're looking to acquire. Um, if you look at the red uh, portion of the map, um, this is the proposed acquisition. And as Chuck said, it's roughly about 100 acres and it's two tracts of land and those two tracts of land are separated by the uh, Rio Benito River that runs through the middle of that property. Um, you're also gonna see a lot of other stuff on this map. And um, if you look at the different colors uh, pertaining to you know, uh, different types of subdivisions and land statuses, if you look down on the uh, legend, uh, that's gonna kind of help you uh, determine what is what. So again, the red is the uh, proposed acquisition area that we're looking at acquiring. Um, we also have uh, the Copper Mountain subdivision, um, Rio Benito Estates, Shadow Mountain Estates, the Ranches of Santerra, Vista Rio Benito subdivision, and Wilderness Valley subdivision. So that's, that's basically all of the different colors that you see uh, what would be on the west side of the map. Um, if you look towards the east side, you're going to see a lot of, a lot of um, yellow, and that's what Chuck referred to earlier as our Fort Stanton a national conservation area. And uh, if you look uh, at the dotted lines, those are our current trails uh, that are on uh, Fort Stanton NCA. And uh, we'll refer to this in just a little bit when we uh, go further uh, through the slides when we talk about access. But I really want everybody to kind of focus on the, um, on the end of those trails where it's actually going into that red piece of property. This is where we're gonna be talking access in the future. But anyway, I just wanted to give everybody a, a, a 10,000 foot view of what we're really looking at and uh, how complex this is and uh, how we want to make sure that we're being good neighbors and making good decisions uh, for not only the public, but the uh, surrounding uh, landowners in the area. So next let's talk about uh, proposed management prescriptions. And Guys, like Chuck talked about earlier, um, we're really just gonna scratch the surface when it comes with these to these topics that are on the slide now. But it seems that these were one of the uh, more important topics that have been brought up. So we just wanted to touch on those a little bit, but like Chuck said, please take the time to go into that EA because it's gonna get into further detail, uh, not only with these subjects, but other subjects also. So 
First thing we want to talk about is identification and protection of natural and cultural her heritage resources. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, this piece of property is very rich and abundant in history. And um, we want to try and make good decisions on this property. We want to make sure that uh, we're doing everything that we can to protect that also for future generations. So on this property, um, we have what's called the cantina or the brewery. And uh, this is a uh, historic uh, building that's basically just kind of melting away out there. And uh, we wanna make sure uh, that we're doing everything that we can to protect that if and when we, we acquire this property. Uh, very rich in history and a, a lot of information there. So that's, that's, uh, that's one of the uh, uh, gems of this property. We also have petroglyphs um, on, the, uh, on the property and those are uh, adjacent to uh, Fort Stanton Falls. Um, so this property was also very popular to Native Americans uh, long before we were there. So that's, an, that's another um, um, uh, gem that we wanna try to impact or try to protect in the future um, for future generations also. So now let's go ahead and move into recreational use safety and facility development. And I think these were some of the major topics uh, that were discussed uh, in the past with the public and, and private landowners in the area. So um, let's talk about uh, types of public access and use. I think one of the, um, the main concerns was is, uh, if and when we acquire this property, where do we wanna bring the public in? And referring to that map that we had previous, um, we had a bottleneck of trails uh, on, the, uh, on the NCA that meet up with the proposed property. And we wanna be very clear that this is where we want the public to come into this property. Um, there's been some concerns about um, what does that mean for the public, uh, possibly entering up on top uh, on the uh, Sontera subdivision along the county maintained road. And that is not a priority for us, for the public. Um, we would also um, like to leave that open for administrative use, but that would probably be for administrative use only. Uh, for our personnel and our specialists here in the office, but um, we really want to focus that we want access to come in on the bottom uh, through the National Conservation Area. We want to be good neighbors to everybody. We want to focus it and keep it down on the NCA. So let's also talk about um, some of the topics that came out of that. And in trying to be good neighbors with the public coming into that piece of property, what can we do to be the best neighbor. And I think one of, one of those um, prescriptions is day use only. Um, this is something that's gone through um, numerous um, conversations and trying to make good decisions there. So day use would, would be a, a great avenue um, to make sure one, we're being good neighbors and two, that uh, we're um, maintaining and keeping up with this property. Um, the next topic is pedestrian access. And I think we had a vision when it came to this property. One, because it's, you know, it's a hundred acres and it's a smaller piece of property. And um, people that visit this piece of property, uh, they're normally funneled down to the established trail along the river and want to uh, visit the waterfall. So with that, um, just because it's so concentrated, it's a narrow pathway. We really wanted to focus on pedestrian access, foot access only, um, just for safety concerns. Um, however, um, if you guys have any other ideas when it comes to uh, you know, possibly OHV or equestrian, um, please feel free uh, to comment and, and give us uh, your input on that so we can make sure we're making good decisions. So we're looking at the big picture here and going through everything. So uh, we need your help to uh, help us make good decisions there. So another hot topic is always fire. So we are in the Sacramento mountains. Uh, we also wanna make sure that we're being good neighbors again and safety is always a number one concern. So uh, when it comes to fire and uh, being good neighbors because of the proximity to other uh, pro um, dwellings in the area, we want to limit campfire and we do not want campfires uh, on the property. So of course, we always wanna focus on, on being safe and also again, being a good neighbor. And that's what you're gonna probably hear me repeat numerous times. So let's also talk about safety quality and the recreational experience. So as we know, this is, um, this is why people visit the National Conservation Area and it's to recreate. So 
we also want to talk about types of fencing. Um, that's that's another topic that came up. Uh, as you saw in the previous map, um, we have a lot of adjacent landowners to this property. And what does that mean as far as protecting the public and the adjacent landowner? So um, when we talk about fencing, we want to make sure that we're going to put something in that's going to stand the test of time, if and when we put one in. Um, these are taxpayer dollars, folks. So um, we want to make sure we're building something that's quality and that's going to last. So uh, I think the sky's the limit here when it comes to types of fencing. Uh, this is where we'd also like to hear from the public and the, uh, uh, the adjacent landowners in the area. What's your vision of a fence if, if we were to fence uh, this property off? We need that input. Help us out there. We'll help make, it'll help us make good decisions. Next is signage and outreach. So when we open this up uh, to the public, we want to make sure, again, that we're notifying the public that we want access to be down on the National Conservation Area down on the bottom. So this is where signage is going to be very important, especially up on top. We want to make sure the public understands that that's not an area to access the property and they need access from the NCA. Um, Prickshire also walking in to this property from the National Conservation Area. Um, signage will also talk to them about, like we talked about earlier, that this is day use only, um, that it possibly may be only be pedestrian access, and that we're also not going to allow campfires. So these, these, these signs are going to really help the, and educate the public on what they can and can't do in the area. Also think about when it comes um, to signage, also interpretation is always another good thing. Like we said, this, uh, this piece of property is um, very rich in, in history. Interpretation would also be a good thing to educate the public on what was there a long time ago and kind of tell the story of Fort Stanton Falls. So there's also a, um, a good opportunity there for education. Next, let's talk about weapons use and limitations. Again, I'm gonna say it again, we wanna be good neighbors to everybody. As you can, as you can see from the previous slide, uh, when it comes to that map, we have a lot of adjacent landowners and we're basically in people's backyards here. So when it comes to weapons, we don't want to allow any type of weapon or firearm on this piece of property due to the fact that it's very small, concentrated, uh, and again, uh, we're close to uh, other individuals and their property and we wanna make sure that we're safe and we're, we're the public safe and also that the uh, adjacent landowners are also safe and there's no worries there. So that will also be something that will be signed. Finally, let's talk about maintenance and cleanup. This is always a hot topic when it comes to the BLM acquiring properties. So one, I wanna be clear here that this is gonna be a priority uh, for the BLM. And we're also blessed with the staff, um, with the BLM staff located uh, on Fort Stanton um, on the state property. This is a good thing because we have staff there Monday through Friday and then also on the weekends if needed to. So um, we have a staff available um, to uh, maintain the property, to keep an eye on the property. And guys, if we're talking about day use only, we're gonna have to have somebody open up a gate. We're gonna have to have somebody close a gate. And that's also gonna be a great opportunity for that individual or that, or that team to go down there and look and make sure that, that we don't have any issues. And if we do, we'll be there to address them and clean them up too. Um, we also may have an opportunity uh, to bring in a camp host in the area to also help out. So that's just another, another individual or, or a small team that can really help uh, with maintenance and cleanup of the area. So guys, this, these were just some of, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, these are some bigger topics, but again, take, take your time and go through that document because it's really gonna go into detail uh, on these topics and it'll kind of help you understand uh, what our vision is. And also the take home message is, is please comment. We, we need your help here. Um, uh, give us your ideas and this is your opportunity to where we can address that in the document. And uh, if it's something that needs to move forward, this is that opportunity. So with that guys, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back off to Jill and we're gonna talk about the EA process. Thank you. The draft environmental assessment or draft EA that is available on the BLM's e-planning website was written in accordance with the National Environmental Policy Act of 1969, or NEPA. This graphic shows an overview of the EA process for the Rio Benito acquisition project. 
the BLM received the request to purchase private lands in early 2019. The first coordination meeting was held in March 2019 and the subdivision homeowners associate with the subdivision homeowners association to identify issues and concerns of the landowners. The BLM published the EA for public review on June 22, 2020. And we are now within the 30 day period for receiving public comments regarding the analysis. Following this comment period, the BLM will review all input and make revisions to the EA if necessary and issue the revised EA and a decision record. What is NEPA and what is an EA? The National Environmental Policy Act of 1969, or NEPA, requires federal agencies, such as the BLM, to analyze and disclose impacts for any projects proposed. An environmental assessment analyzes existing environmental conditions, identifies key issues to focus the analysis, identifies environmental consequences and impacts of proposed actions and strategizes how to avoid or reduce impacts. Findings from the EAs help the public officials make informed decisions about the project. How can you review the EA? The Rio Benito Falls Acquisition Draft EA was made available to the public for review beginning June 22nd, 2020. The EA can be found on the BLM's ePlanning website by going to ePlanning.blm.gov. The comment period for this project will close on July 25th of 2020. What comments are helpful? The BLM will read and review all comments received. However, some comments may be more helpful than others in the review process. These comments are called substantive comments. Substantive comments should reasonably question the accuracy of the information in the EA, reasonably question the adequacy or methodology used in the analysis, present new information relevant to the analysis, present reasonable alternatives other than those analyzed in the EA, or suggest changes or revisions in one or more alternatives analyzed. Some examples of comments could be, for a non-substantive comment, this project is a good idea. An example of a substantive comment would be, there is a recent study that there is an increase in squirrel migration in areas like the one being analyzed in this document. I'm attaching the report to this comment for your review and consideration. Comments can be provided by the following means. Today, during this virtual public meeting, all questions and statements from today are being recorded and will be transcribed and included in the project file. You can also leave a voicemail comment by calling 575-627-0209. You can visit the BLM's e-planning page and do a search for the Rio Benito Falls or you can mail your comments to the BLM Roswell Field Office, attention, Rio Benito Falls EA, at 2909 West 2nd Street, Roswell, New Mexico, 88201. This concludes the formal presentation part of our meeting. We will now begin the live question and answer session. The live question and answer session will continue until 7.15 or earlier if there are no additional questions. Once the question and answer session is complete, we will begin public statement portion of this meeting. 
As a reminder, panelists for the Q&A consist of Chuck Schmidt, Ruben Sanchez, and the Roswell Field Office interdisciplinary team. If you would like to ask a question through the chat feature, please click on the Q&A button on your Zoom screen. You will be able to type your question and then press send. The BLM staff will be able to review your questions. Those participants joining us by Zoom can also use the raise hand function to let us know that you would like to provide a verbal question. Once it is your turn to speak, we will announce you by name and open your microphone so that you can begin speaking. As a reminder, we may not have immediate answers for some of your more complex questions. If we are unable to respond to, to your questions today, please know that we will be posting answer to these after the completion of today's meeting on the project's e-planning website. However, our goal is to be able to respond to as many of your questions today as we can. We will now begin with the questions that were previously submitted through registration. I will read them out loud and one of our BLM Roswell staff members will respond. Our first question comes from Kevin Flaherty and his question is, Will the BLM be good stewards for the Fort Stanton Falls and be respectful of adjacent homeowners' properties and security? Okay, folks, so this is Chuck Schmidt. Uh, and Kevin, I believe you're on with us. And, and so uh, I actually do believe that we're gonna be a good steward of this property. I think we're well uh, postured uh, with, our, with our current staff up there and our use of volunteers uh, to have uh, folks on site that assist. Uh, and as, as you go through this environmental assessment and going back to uh, what Ruben covered, uh, I, I do believe you'll see that uh, we've, we've very much got in mind the adjacent hand, uh, landowners and, and uh, in the management of this area. Uh, th that's why you're seeing uh, 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 proposals such as uh, no campfires, no firearms, um, and uh, discussing uh, permanent fencing and, and uh, limiting access from the NCA so uh, we don't have folks coming through the subdivisions trying to access this area. So. Uh, that, that would be my comment to that one. And, and Kevin, if you are on, uh, please uh, feel free to ask uh, uh, during the, uh, add on to that during the open mic portion. Thank you, Jill. Great. Our next question is from Elizabeth Cano. I apologize if I spelled or stated your name wrong. Her question is, how are you going to keep this area unpolluted and safe for all the wildlife? Too many camp areas have become a haven for overcrowding and trashing our resources. We need to make sure there is no impact on the animals and native plants. Okay guys, this is Ruben and I'll go ahead and, and take this one. So um, as we talked about earlier and what I touched on, um, I think, you know, people are also concerned with, with trash uh, when, when people uh, visit that area. So as, as me and Chuck have touched on, um, we're blessed with a staff that we're blessed with volunteers and possibly might even be blessed with a camp host for the area. So, um, you know, this is going to be a major duty for those guys to make sure that we're keeping that, that property clean and unpolluted. Uh, so then that does not impact wildlife. Um, I think within that question, they were kind of referring to a camp area, and um, this is where we're talking about day use, so we're not going to allow camping on the property. So um, I think the positive thing here is, though, is that if people do want to camp, uh, we have the Fort Stanton NCA just adjacent to the property, and they can camp on the, on the National Conservation Area. But for this, 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 um, this property that we're talking about now, the 100 acres, uh, we would not allow camping on that. Um, so to, to go into, um, you know, talking about animals and native plants, uh, this is where the BLM is also blessed, where we have biologists on hand. And this is going to be something that's near and dear to them because they're also going to want to make sure that we're making good decisions for wildlife and native plants or T&E species in the area. 
So I think this is a positive thing uh, to have those specialists available to help manage and make good decisions for this piece of property. Thank you, Chuck. And thank you, Elizabeth. Our next question is from Ronate Daniels. The question is, I have concerns about the public entering the falls area through the ranches of Santerra on Los Estrellas Drive. There is mention about the Rio Vista Bonita subdivision, which makes no sense because this is a gated subdivision. The Los Estrellas Road and ranches of Santerra is public and dead ends into the falls area. Who is going to maintain the trash and litter issues the public brings with them? It is already a problem with illegal entry and litter. That's a fantastic question. So what, I, what I'd like to do is refer back to some of our earlier comments. Uh, the access, and, and I believe that there's a question in the question here. Uh, when you say it, it makes no sense because it's a gated subdivision, that is correct if you drive into the subdivision. But on that uh, cul-de-sac, off of uh, La Estrella Road, uh, you're actually touching Rio, Vista Rio Benito subdivision. And so that's why we mentioned that. Um, we do not want the public to access from that end. We want them to come from the National Conservation Area onto these parcels. And so that's how we're trying to, to address that. So who's gonna maintain the trash and litter? Well, in a nutshell, that's, that's gonna become the responsibility of the Bureau of Land Management. And uh, as we touched on earlier, but between uh, staff we currently have on board, use of volunteers, uh, potentially a campground host, uh, I, I do believe we're well postured to try and uh, police this area. Also uh, within your question, there's already a problem with the illegal entry and litter, and you could not be more correct on that. And the great bulk of those folks that visit the falls right now, unless they've got permission from the current landowner, are actually in trespass. And it's a well beat in path coming from the National Conser Conservation Area into this area. So it's recognized. And so we, we want to try and make it to where the, the Bureau is responsible for that and, and uh, not the current property owner, because uh, at this point, he's just got uh, an issue on his hand that's just hard to manage. And so uh, if this acquisition is successful, it puts us on the hook and uh, we are now accountable for that uh, to, to make sure that we are properly managing this area and uh, keeping it clean. So uh, thank you for that question. That was very good. Our next question comes from Eric Nelson. I would like to understand how the BLM can manage this tract, this tract of land better than the current private landowner. Hey, I, I, I don't know that uh, we believe we can manage it better. I think, uh, you know, the previous question that I just answered, you, we've, got, we've got a lot of the public already there. And I, and I think uh, the current landowner recognizes that. Um, I, th I think with uh, having a staff available to us and the responsibility put uh, back on us, I think we're probably uh, in a good, uh, we're postured well to be able to manage it. Currently with all the trespass activity, uh, I think it becomes uh, really a handful for that, that, that current landowner to manage in, in, in a burden. And so I, I would never posture saying that we could uh, manage it better. I just think we're postured better with having a staff to be able to, to maintain it because the public uh, is currently going there. And so I think by uh, uh, converting this into public land and, and the responsibility to the Bureau of Land Management to manage, I think we're, uh, we're in a better place for that. And I do believe Eric is on uh, as well. And Eric, if you do uh, want to follow up, uh, please answer when we go live and, and uh, we can have a further conversation on that. Thanks, Jill. Great. Our next question is from Ron Pry. I am a landowner on the Las Estrellas and ranches of Santerra. The following statement appears in the draft environmental assessment. A permanent fence would be built on the west side of the property, on the ranches of Santerra and the Vista 
Rio Bonito subdivision side, there would be signs placed of no access to the public. My question is what a permanent fence means. A permanent fence could be anything. Branches of Sentara should have input to ensure we get a fence that visit visitors can't just hop over or climb through. Aesthetics are also important, which would exclude barbed wire or similar fences. What specifically is proposed by the BLM? Well, thank you, Ron. I really appreciate you asking this question because it's a very good question. And um, so here's our vision. Um, again, like I talked about earlier, um, if and when we do uh, acquire this property and then put taxpayer dollars into the property, we wanna try and make sure we're doing it right the first time. So um, this is where uh, it's a great opportunity for the um, adjacent private landowners to kind of give us their vision of what they think a good fence would be. Um, it's also a good opportunity for our folks here in the office to kind of uh, talk about that vision. Um, I think if it's gonna be something, um, I would not visualize um, you know, a T-post bob wire strand fence um, because I think we know that um, through time, those are, those are uh, high in maintenance and may, might not stand the test of time. So I think it would probably be something uh, a lot better than just a, uh, a bob wire T-post fence. You know, I think conversations have happened about a, you know, a steel pipe fence might, might work and, and would stand the test of time too. And then one of the other things that we also have to look at when we're uh, building or constructing anything in this area is on the uh, Fort Stanton NCA, I believe it's a VRM class two. So the VRM is called um, visual resource management. So when we put something in, we wanna make sure that it blends in with the surrounding environment, looks good, uh, and also, like I talked about before, stands the test of time. So um, yes, this is something that we're looking into, but this is also a great opportunity for you guys to kind of give us your input and in what you visualize. Because again, it's taxpayer dollars and we wanna make sure that we're making a, a good decision the first time. And thank you again, Ron, for asking that question. Uh, and uh, feel free to um, speak about it later on in the presentation when you have that opportunity. We have another question from Ron Pry. A second statement in this draft reads, people parking in the cul-de-sac lo located at the end of Los Estrellas Road located in the ranches of Santerra could impact neighbors and impede emergency vehicles needing to turn around in the cul-de-sac. If the BLM puts up the proper permanent fence, then why would anyone park in the cul-de-sac if they cannot gain access? This is exactly why the BLM needs to specify what kind of fence or wall would be erected. I am not suggesting a large wall or fence needs to be constructed along the entire western perimeter, but I do want to know the specifics of fencing in the cul-de-sac. Okay, and, and Ron is with us tonight, so Ron, if, if we're missing uh, the question, please please uh, bring that up uh, when you have the opportunity. Uh, so I, I do agree uh, with the statement, uh, you know, as far as emergency vehicles and such, uh, we do want to have that open. If there is no true public access, you are exactly right, there would be no reason for the public to park there. Uh, it is a county road, so I mean, that, that would be something uh, for consideration, but there would be no, uh, no reason for folks visiting this new ac acquired land to park there. So that's exactly right. And I couldn't agree more, and Ruben really hit on it hard. We gotta get this fence right. We need your help, uh, and we really wanna work with, uh, with the adjacent landowners uh, to try and figure out what the right fence looks like. Because yeah, we could put up a, a four strand barbed wire fence, but you know, that's only as good of a, as a pair of pliers to cut. And, and we recognize that. So, you know, we're looking for something a little more permanent, a little more hardened. And uh, so uh, do comment. I, I, we really are uh, looking for, for folks to, to give us their vision and uh, we'll make the decision. And, and I think it'll be uh, something acceptable to all. So thanks for that, Ron. And, and uh, back to you, Joe. Okay, our next question is from Tammy Torres. Her question is, will there be a trail developed on the property? Okay guys, I'll go ahead and take a stab at this one. So 
Um, as Chuck talked about earlier, um, down on the bottom, um, where we have our, our, our trails kind of bottlenecking to the property, uh, there already is a well-established um, pedestrian trail, trail uh, following the Rio Benito uh, River uh, to the waterfalls. So um, I think when we kind of visualize this property, I think, you know, the tranquility of it is, is something that we want to try and keep, um, you know, for not only for the adjacent landowners who enjoy that, also for future generations. So um, if and when a trail goes in, I think it would probably uh, go along the trail that's already there. Um, Later or in the in the future, one thing that we can talk about is um, if we want to improve that type of trail, um, you know, just to make sure people are safe out there in inclement weather and stuff like that. So, um, you know, there's different types of, of type of aggregates we can put on the ground and stuff like that for the trail. Uh, we want to make sure we're building it correctly so, um, you know, it's easy to maintain and doesn't turn into another headache. So, um, as far as development of future trails, I really don't see that happening. Uh, what's there now I think is adequate and the public has been using it for uh, a number of years and if anything we'd probably just want to improve upon that and make it safe. And thank you uh, Tammy for that question and again if you want to talk uh, about it uh, in depth uh, feel free to do that later on in the presentation and I appreciate the question. We have another question from Kevin Flaherty, and this is a follow-up to his first question. I'll read his first question first that we have already answered, and then I'll go on to the follow-up. His first question was, will BLM be good stewards for Fort Santon Falls and be respectful to adjacent homeowners and property and prop with property and security? The follow-up to this is, the goal is to improve watershed function and to enhance quality and water availability. How will the BLM support the water flow in the Bonito River when Almogordo completes their rehab of the Bonito Lake? Okay, Kevin, uh, and, and feel free to, to add on to your question, Kevin, when uh, you get the opportunity on the live section. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to focus on your, your question on, on the Benito Dam and Benito Lake and then the water flows in the Benito River. That is a complicated subject. Um, realistically, uh, there's no water rights associated with this 100 acres. Uh, and anytime we start uh, discussing water rights and water law uh, that in the state of New Mexico, uh, we have, to, we have to focus on those actual rights. The BLM does have water rights, but it's much further downstream uh, below Fort Stanton and going towards the uh, Lincoln area. Uh, we have successfully uh, uh, protected those water rights. We've also uh, been recognized uh, th through the Interstate, Interstate Stream uh, Commission uh, for uh, utilizing and placing a portion of our water rights for in-stream flow. So we are, we are very committed uh, to doing the right thing with, with water rights. As far as Alamogordo and their water rights and, and all the folks that are down below, uh, we're, we're going to be engaged to the best of our ability. But when it comes down to, you know, if Alamogordo pulls their water and it potentially uh, makes this uh, stream dry up during uh, the drier parts of the year, you know, we're going to have to respect with decisions coming out of the state of New Mexico. Uh, but that does not mean we cannot partner with folks and, and have good, open, honest conversations. And so that, that's how I would uh, answer your question on that, uh, Kevin. Okay, great. We do have someone with a hand raised, Jeff Blue. Um, we will go ahead and open up your microphone, and once I do that, um, you should be able to unmute yourself, and you can begin asking your question. Okay, I, I thought that I had submitted my question on, online, but uh, I'll, I'll ask it uh, verbally. Um, I have quite a few of the same issues that have been presented so far, but to boil it down, as far as the fencing goes, and I, you know, I feel we need to talk about a hard fence. So, and I know that this will come eventually, but my, my statement real and my question is passive barriers will not be enough. Fences will not be enough. Signs will not be enough. We some, the only, it, currently the only 
recourse we have is to call the sheriff's office, local law enforcement. Now, once the BLM gets involved, what enforcement resources is the BLM willing to commit? Great question, Jeff. So currently, uh, since this area is privately owned, your, your recourse is through the local county sheriff's office. Uh, the BLM and our law enforcement ranger, we have no jurisdiction and ability to enforce uh, the laws since it is private land. If we are successful in this acquisition, uh, that becomes under our jurisdiction. So uh, the law enforcement officer uh, that, that works with us, who uh, partners well with uh, the U.S. Forest Service and the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office, I think uh, we, we actually bring a little more to the table. And so enforcement uh, in, in would, would be enhanced in that regard. We have another question that came through the Q&A chat feature from Eric Nelson. His question is, since this is a smaller area and could become congested at certain times with the number of visitors allowed into the area at any given time, can this be controlled or limited? Another great question, Eric. Um, we do know it's popular. Uh, we, we, we've, uh, we've heard counts of an excess of 60 people uh, recently, to be honest with you. And so when we turn it public, uh, you, we do have uh, the potential of this being really over-visited. Um, in the current EA, we, we have not addressed that because we, we're not quite sure how popular it's gonna be. We do anticipate it will be popular. Um, but these are these are the sorts of th comments uh, that very much are going to be looked at. So uh, I would really encourage you to to make sure and submit a, a, a comment to us, and, and we're capturing this live as we as we're going through as well. That may be something that we need need to implement. Uh, you know, see if there's a way. How you go about doing that? You know, th folks, keep in mind this is pretty remote, especially coming from the National Conservation Area side. Uh, are we going to count them in, count them out, you know, and, and all those things. It gets complex, but I, I, I would be open to, especially if we start having impacts that we cannot manage. Um, and I think a lot of the time, too, I'm just kind of changing gears on you just a bit. You know, if, if folks are going to, uh, for a getaway to, to go enjoy nature and, and kind of have a little bit of solitude and they walk, walk up and there's already 20 or 30 people there, I think there are going to be a little bit of self-regulation, or at least I'd like to think so. Uh, and, and keep in mind, since we're proposing day use only, uh, you know, at least at nighttime, the, the area is going to thin out and, and you won't have that uh, going at night. So, so that's, that's how I would answer that, Eric. Okay, we do not have any more people with their hands raised, nor do we have any additional questions in our Q&A chat function. We do have another couple of minutes before we get on to the public statement session. Oh, we just got one. So from Jeff Blue, he has asked, as much as we want to protect from access via La Estrellas, we also want to prevent migration upriver. How will you do that? I think it's really very similar, uh, Jeff, to, to the approach that we're taking that we do not want the public to access from uh, the Santerra or La Estrella side. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely have to sign that area and uh, it, it notify the public that, you know, this designates uh, private land behind this sign and, and that you will be in trespass. And so that, that would be uh, really signage. And it goes back to your earlier question, if we have a problem, uh, now my law enforcement ranger can become involved and uh, by all means, uh, the landowners in the area uh, can call the Lincoln County Sheriff. So, so that's, that's how I would go about answering that, Jeff. Okay, well, we are right on track to begin our public statement session of this meeting. 
Um, so we'll go ahead and close out from our Q&A. We will be taking statements in the order that requests were received during registration. After registrants that stated they wanted to provide comments have all spoken, we will open up the microphone for additional attendees to provide their comments. The, direction, the directions for this session are similar, similar to those that were for the question and answer session. When it is your turn to comment, I will call you by the name you registered under. If you are on Zoom, when you hear your name, please raise your hand so that we know you're ready to provide your comments. To ensure that we can receive as many comments as possible, we are limiting each commenter to three minutes. After three minutes are complete, the commenter's microphone will no longer work and we'll move to the next person. We want to remind commenters that they are being recorded and to please be courteous to the audience by not using profanity while providing your statements. We ask that once it is your turn to speak and your line is open, to please state both your first and last name. We will now begin with the statement portion of this session. For our pre-registrants, our first person would be Jeff Blue. Jeff, are you ready to provide your comments? Please raise your hand if you are. Okay, I am going to- I should have muted myself. Perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you. And you're probably gonna get a good theme uh, from obviously from the written question submitted, but um, there'll be quite a theme with these going forward. I serve on the, my name is Jeff Blue and I live on Santiago Circle. I, I uh, serve on the Ranches of Santerra Property Owners Board uh, as the land management director. I bought my property in 1997 from the developer of Ranches of Santerra. The roads and Ranches of Santerra were built by the developer uh, for access to residential property. And that eventually included access to the Vista Rio Benito subdivision. And the roads were turned over to Lincoln County upon completion. Vista Rio Benito established roads and are gated while the roads and ranches of Santerra are maintained by Lincoln County. Through the years, there's always been a trespassing thing uh, with the falls, but that's been limited to people who were willfully willing to violate private property. Um, when you start converting it to uh, public property, you've got a bigger audience. My concern is if the BLM converts this property to public lands and doesn't manage it properly, uh, the traffic through our residential neighborhood via Las Estrellas will skyrocket, bringing with it litter and vandalism and problems as seen recently at local public spaces such as Alto and Grindstone Lake. Uh, safety problems due to speeding on our 25 to 30 mile an hour uh, roads here in Santerra. Although I've been assured that uh, you'll allow access only from Fort Stanton or from 220, uh, it does raise considerable concern. I want to make sure that adjacent property owners are protected. You've got to provide, uh, not only in the cost of the property, you've got to provide for uh, infrastructure improvements. And I know you've said all the right words, but we need something tangible that says we're gonna do this. That includes hard fences, barriers, signage, trail development maintenance, and especially enforcement along the uh, boundaries. Um, I recognize that the individual that owns a property has every right to sell it. You have every right to buy it, but we should not be, uh, expect property owners ability to enjoy their property to be compromised or that their property values would be decreased as a result of this and i've got more stuff and i'll i'm coming up on three minutes so i'm trying to comply i've got more stuff but i'll, I'll talk specifically to the uh assessment uh when i get that opportunity thank you thanks jeff and thanks for keeping an eye on the time as well uh, we should have more time at, once we get through this to allow participants to speak again. Our next speaker will be Laura Ronick. Um, Laura, if you're ready, 
please raise your hand and we will open up your microphone. Okay, maybe Laura's not quite ready. Let's go on to our next person and we'll follow up with Laura in a moment. Our next speaker will be Kevin Flaherty. Kevin, if you're ready, please raise your hand. All right, this, oh, there's Kevin. Kevin, can you unmute your microphone or do you need assistance? I saw your hand raised briefly. There we go. There you go. Okay. Uh, Kevin Flaherty, uh, president of uh, Vista Rio Benito Unit 1 and have been a proud owner of the property along the Benito River. Uh, my first uh, comment is the watershed management comment. Um, and Chuck, I think, um, I think we need to be more involved than just saying we have nothing we can do about it. I understand you wanting to be a partner and be a good partner, but Alamogordo has all the intentions to take all the water out of the river. And before we know it, there will be no water in the Fort Stanton Falls, and that will be a travesty. And we need the support from the government side from the BLM side and from the homeowner side to join forces and be strong and stand stand up for Alamogordo. And not, we're not asking for everything, but sharing is caring. And I think that they need to be a sharing neighbor to uh, our beautiful water that is part of Lincoln County, not part of their county, part of Lincoln County. That's my comment on the watershed management thing. I also had a question about uh, the accessibility to our gated community on the uh, north side of the river. As you saw on that map with the red zone, there's a stretch of land that is part of BLMs that goes all the way to our pavement in our gated community. That's unacceptable. We have to find a common solution to that. And I think by us communicating, we can do that. But I want that to, I want Chuck to know that I am looking for that, um, that solution to that problem right there because our primary goal is to have no access to our gated community and absolutely no access to our roads from the acquired 100 acres that are being talked about here. I appreciate everybody's, uh, involvement in this uh we want to make it right let's make it right and let's keep bringing our comments and our questions to you guys so that we can make it right on the ae is it is it realistic that things can change that have been printed in that before the july 25th deadline we come up with comments we have suggestions I don't want to see us locked in stone and have to live with the, with the A&E that you put out because I do believe there is room for improvement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Our next commenter will be Elizabeth Kenno. Elizabeth, if you're here with us and you'd like to provide your statement, please raise your hand and we will open up your microphone. Okay. Um, let's go on to our next commenter, 
Renate Daniels, if you would like to provide your comment, please raise your hand. What about Eric Nelson? If you are ready to provide your statement, please raise your hand and we will open up your microphone. So if you hear me and I have called your name and you're ready to provide your statement, please use the raise hand feature so that we know that you're ready to provide your comment and we will open up your microphone and you can begin speaking. We are currently going through all of our pre-registrants that have indicated that they would like to provide a formal statement during this meeting. Okay, well, it does not look like we have anyone that pre-registered that is ready to provide their statements. I'll go over their directions again for how anyone else could provide their statements this afternoon. You can raise your hand and we can open up your microphone or you could put your statement in the Q&A chat function at the bottom of your Zoom screen and we will be able to accept your comments that way as well. Once I see a hand raised, we'll open up that microphone and we will be here until 8 p.m. So there's still plenty of time for you to provide your statements. If you're chewing on something and maybe want to talk it out with us, we are available to do that as well. We don't have a very large audience, so please let us know if you're ready to talk. Um, Jeff, you had also stated previously that you might have more to provide to us. So if you're ready to provide additional comments, um, we don't have any other volunteers at the moment. So please raise your hand if you'd like to continue. Okay, did you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I can't hear you right now, so let me go ahead. Uh, I was muted. Oh, there <laughs> I was you. muted. There okay, okay. very good. Um, I wanted to, if you don't mind, I do have more, and I think you tried to set it up where specific things to the environmental assessment could be discussed in the next section, and I'll be glad to do that. But I also wanted to add on to what Kevin was just talking about, the flow in the Rio Benito. Um, but I want to present it maybe from a different angle that the BLM may want to really consider this because right now the the flow around Bonita Lake it's all diverted around Bonita Lake right now so we are seeing any flow that would be going into the lake is coming down the river when they do start refilling the lake that flow will be diverted um, I don't know how long that's going to take to refill the lake I don't know how much flow they're going to divert. I don't know how much flow might come into the lake, into the river below the lake, but there certainly will be less flow at the falls in front of my house uh, in that, at that time. And that may be something the BLM wants to take a close look at about what is the intrinsic value of the falls at that point, uh, whether to proceed with the project or not. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to point that out, maybe from a different angle of what Kevin talked about. Um, and honestly, since I've got it here, and Kevin's going to be mad at me for this, but I was looking at that same access off of Vista Rio Benito, and my thoughts were, if we could hard fence, now we have the problem with the water line, the Fort Stanton water line. But if we could hard fence that whole western edge of the property and, and do your administrative access 
from the Vista Rio Bonita side, it may it may really make management a lot easier. And Kevin, I'm, I apologize that I didn't get a chance to talk with you about this, but it's a, just an out of the box idea that shouldn't be discounted. Thank you. I don't know what happened. I'm locked up here. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we do not have any additional attendees that currently have their hand raised, and we also do not have any statements that are within the Q&A chat function. Um, Jeff, if you'd like to raise your hand again, or Kevin, or any of our other attendees, um, we are available until 8 p.m. We will be taking both your comments and your statements. I believe I probably ended the Q&A session of this meeting a little bit short, so we are still accepting both questions and statements right now. Um, and we do have a question that just came in. Um, so this question is, do you envision making the day use area eventually a fee area to help control visitation and provide funding for upkeep and the like? I will turn that over to one of our Roswell team members. Okay, yeah, this touch mint, folks. Uh, make sure my camera's turned on there. Um, currently, no. Uh, you know, I, I, I think primarily right now we're, we're more focused on the acquisition and, and hopefully uh, we, we're successful in that. Uh, you know, potentially that's a great comment. Uh, potentially down the road, that, that might be a way uh, to help manage that area and, and potentially control visitation. Uh, lots, lots of uh, things would have to happen before we get to that point, obviously. Uh, anytime we propose a fee area, uh, the field office has to run that through what's called a resource advisory uh, council. Uh, that's a brand new uh, process for us now because uh, we're combining uh, what we call the RACS, Resource Advisory Council, to a Southern New Mexico RAC. And, and so we're basically in with the Las Cruces uh, uh, District as well as the Socorro Field Office. So we're going to be getting that kicked off here this, this fall. Uh, and that, the only reason I'm boring you with all those details is, is uh, the field office has to write up what's called a, a resource, uh, a recreation area management plan and, and build the case uh, for charging fees and, and so complicated process, but I actually really like your question. Uh, that, that might be something if this thing's getting overutilized and we're, we're struggling with too many folks, that, that very well could be an option. But at this point, we have not considered that. So uh, thank you, Anonymous, and uh, look forward to the conversation with you on that uh, down the road. Okay, um, does anyone else like to raise their hand? It looks like Kevin has his hand raised. Kevin, I'm gonna open up your microphone. And when you're ready to speak, go ahead and continue speaking. Thanks again, this is Kevin. Uh, Jeff, that's okay, you're a good neighbor. I won't hold it against you. My topic on this comment is about equestrian access. I know that we have a lot of our neighbors in the Santerra area, as well as in Vista Rio Benito, that love our horses and love to ride. And by, I don't know how it can work, but if I didn't make a comment of it, I would feel like I was shorting this exercise here. But we should consider accessibility for equestrian riding to go through, and I don't know how it could work in a fence situation, but to have access on that side of the river for all of our horse lovers to be able to access down into Fort Stanton. There's, a, there's the water trail 
that uh, the um, easement, water easement that goes down there that has its own road that doesn't interfere with the falls at all. And if there was some way that that could be created and it was beneficial for all, myself and my family as horse owners and horse lovers would appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. We will now be opening up Jeff's microphone. Jeff, you can begin speaking. Oops, Am I, you got me on there? Um, I wasn't sure if I was muted. We can hear uh, you. Okay, very good. Uh, I wasn't sure if Kevin brought that up just because I brought up about uh, the other access. Well, Kevin brought up the horse access. I don't know how you get a gate that you get a horse through that you couldn't just walk through. But anyways, uh, I'd like to move on to some of my concerns about the environmental assessment directly. Now, I know there's a lot of ambiguities in the environmental assessment on purpose. Uh, we'll need to drill down on those. But 1.6.1, internal and external scoping. The fourth item in the table talks about precluding the public from entering the acquired parcel from Vistaria Benito. I think it would be more appropriate to change that to say acquired parcel from ranches of Santerra because there's more likelihood that it would be accessed from ranches of Santerra than Vistaria Benito. Once that, once, once Vista Rio Benito closes their gates, they're protected. Um, further, uh, section 3.3.2.2 3 talks about the behavior that we won't accept. And the 3.2.3 .3 talks about mitigations. And that needs to be strengthened quite a bit uh, to prevent either ingress or egress by any points other than those that adjoin the NCA. Uh, to that end, strong, and like I've said, there's a theme here, strong positive measures will be required to mitigate these problems, including the construction of hard fencing, barriers, signage, and most importantly, the enforcement issue. Um, so we got to discourage inappropriate behavior. Uh, 3.71.1 recreation under affected environment mentions there are no evidence of overnight camping, yet we've had several instances of overnight camping in that area. Um, and I also, in general, uh, on the environmental assessment, any reference to the term cul-de-sac should be struck and replaced with the term emergency vehicle turnaround. Those, that's what that feature was designed for when the developer had to build those roads and they're throughout Santerra. So uh, if it's impeded, we're impeding emergency vehicle traffic. So we need to, we need to emphasize that that's a, 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 we shouldn't be obstructing that traffic. That's all I have, thank you. Great, thank you. I do not see anyone else with their hand raised right now, nor do I have any questions waiting in the Q&A chat function. Um, if you would like to provide an additional statement or if you have not provided a statement yet, you can either raise your hand and provide them verbally to us, or you could click on the Q&A chat box and chat them over to us and we can read them aloud. I will be turning off my microphone and stopping my video for a moment and I will check back in with you in a few minutes.
Okay, Jeff is wanting to speak. I am going to open up your microphone, Jeff, and you should be able to speak. Okay, I think I finally figured out how to do this. Um, two, a uh, couple, just a couple of things I just want to be sure of. Is that, uh, will you be sending out minutes of this meeting? Okay, well, maybe I can't be, maybe I'm not, I uh, can't take uh, interactive questions. So my questions are, will there be minutes sent out to this? And is there a list of attendees? Those two things I'd like to know. Uh, furthermore, I was hoping that uh, someone from Visteria Benito would uh, talk to this, but the fact that the property that's in question is still currently covered by covenants and restrictions, uh, what is the plan? Uh, does the BLM know that these are still covered? Uh, I don't know how that happens that we can have covenants and then have them magically disappear. But uh, I know that's all a function of the Property Owners Association. We have no, we in Santerra have no control over what Vista Rio Benito does, but um, uh, I'm just curious what, what their action is to that and what the BLM's concern is about restrictions. That's all. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, a recording of this video will be made available on the BLM's e-planning website, and we can also post the attendee list, and we'll also have a transcribed version of this meeting. All of that will be available on the e-planning website. We have received a question in the Q&A chat feature from Kevin. If a resident of Ranches of Centero wants to visit the falls and they live on Las Estrellas, will they have to drive many miles to come in on the east side? Chuck or Ruben, would you like to respond? You bet. So Kevin, right now, the way this EA is drafted, uh, with no public access uh, to from that side, from Las Estrellas Drive, they would have to drive around to the bottom on the NCA. So yes, multiple miles. So that you know, it it's tough to manage, and and I understand that it's in your backyard, uh, but but currently, if you are a resident on Sub Santerra, uh, I'm not sure how we can deny the public access. Uh, and, and uh, say, because you're a resident of Santerra to make an exception. Once again, folks, if you've got some good ideas out there, I'm all about hearing them. And, and you know, we're, we're, we're kind of moving between, you know, the hard and fence concept as uh, Mr. Blue's talking about, and, and would this be an exception where we could open up an easement to uh, local residents only? And I don't have an easy answer for you, but I am very much uh, open to suggestions on that. So I really uh, encouraged you, uh, sorry guys, I forgot to turn on my camera. I, I really do encourage uh, comments on that because uh, I, I think that's important. You are uh, neighbors, you are residents, but uh, you gotta keep in mind that uh, it becomes public land and we, we really need to effectively manage this area. Thanks, Jill. Great, we have Jeff that would like to provide another statement. I am unmuting your microphone right now and you are okay to start speaking now. Okay, um, you guys are gonna get sick of hearing from Kevin and I, but we, we work pretty closely together on these things. Um, I would like to add to, to uh, to Chuck's answer and to and to Kevin's question, and on that subject, 
if it were a choice between ranches of the Santero residents having access to the falls from Las Estrellas and the BLM being able to enforce keeping people, other people from accessing from Las Estrellas and keeping people from being able to access into private property from the falls area, I would rather have ranches of Santero residents have to access just like everybody else from the NCA. I know that I may get a lot of people push back against me on that, but I think that's the best thing to protect residents. So, you know, that's, I wanted to kind of help Chuck out on that one because I do think uh, anybody else is not entitled to any better access if we're gonna go this way. And if the BLM is gonna buy this property and make it uh, public lands, and we want to protect our pro our private property residents along Las Estrellas. I know that people may push back on me on that, but I don't know any other way to say it. That's all I've got. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Is there anyone else that is wishing to provide a comment or a statement question at this time? Again, you could use the raise hand feature, or you could also chat your question or comment through the Q&A chat function and we could read them aloud. There is an option also for you to provide your questions anonymously if you prefer to do that. Um, we will accept them and respond to your questions. Thanks. Hi, Kevin, I'm going to open your microphone and you can begin speaking. Really based, uh, directed towards Chuck and I, I just wanted to elaborate on my comment earlier about the um, potential access to Vista Rio Benito, to the hard, hard road that it does connect on the west side, on the north side north side of the river uh of the hundred hundred acres and get his commitment that yes we will work together to find a solution to the stretch of access road that will be blocked so it doesn't come all the way to the pavement in this to rio Benito. i think it's important that uh, i hear his words and know that he's on board with this task because otherwise it's my green light turns red and i don't want to do that i'd like for this thing this plan to go through and to work as na good neighbors and that's my number one issue as far as the access into our gated community I appreciate that. Jill, I know it's kind of breaking protocol, but uh, would, would it be okay for me to, uh, to answer? Absolutely. Okay, I'm asking uh, for uh, us to go back to the map and there it is. Uh, hopefully everybody can see it. So what, what Kevin is referring to, if you look on the north end of that, if you see that little jaunt, a uh, little spit of land coming back out and it touches uh, the road in, uh, and, and that would be this uh, Rio Bonito two subdivision. And so that's where his concern is. And uh, just to be candid in, in a prior conversation, uh, if you were to look at that, and so if we're talking hardened fence, or even in the case if we were just building barbed wire fence, you know, you, you would have to question the, how basically you're fencing in just a, a very small right of way. And so, you know, comments that I, I hope I'm hearing uh, or, or seeing uh, after, after this meeting is would it make better sense just to, to, to basically construct the fence across the, the greater part of that and leave that isolated alone? to where the public is gonna see that gate further interior and not include that. 
I am very much open to that, and I will, uh, and here I am, I'm going on, on record. I, I think that is something that we could very much uh, evaluate and see if it's doable. And, and so uh, that being said, once again, folks, I really would like to hear your comments to that. So, so uh, hopefully, Kevin, that, that uh, uh, kind of answers some of your question on it. And uh, I, I guess if I were in Congress, I'd say I'd yield back my time. So there you go, Jill. Thanks, Chuck. I did just notice that we do have one call-in participant for that individual. If you would like to provide a comment or a question while you're on the phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine. And once we see that you have raised your hand, we can open up your microphone. You can unmute yourself by pressing star six, or if there's a little bit of a delay, we should be able to also unmute. Um, so for everyone else, please raise your hand or provide a comment through the Q&A chat box. We do have a question that came in through the Q&A chat box. Um, I'm sorry, this is a comment. Um, it states, I am a homeowner in the Vista Rio Benito. I would prefer to still have access to the falls from the north side of the river. Thank you for your comment. Again, if you would like to speak some more, raise your hand, provide a comment through the Q&A chat feature, or if you're joining us by phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine. Hi, Kevin, I am opening up your microphone. <clears throat> Are you, uh, to, to, are you with me? Are we with you? Here we are. Um, to uh, just comment on that last uh, call in. Um, intentions are to be able to have access uh, from inside Vista Rio Benito through the access portion that we were talking about, that Chuck and I were talking about. So, yes, we are planning on having access for all Vista Rio Benito residents, homeowners, as part of us agreeing to offer the sale of the Fort Stanton Falls, which has been part of Vista Rio Benito for all, over 20 years. And we respect it and we want to see it healthy, and we want to see the falls live long and live proud. So not to worry about access from the north side. Thank you, Kevin. So I do not have any additional Q&As or anyone with their hands raised. We will still be with you for the next 20 minutes. So please let us know if you have additional comments or questions. Okay, Mr. Ron Cry, I will be opening up your microphone. And 
you can now begin speaking. Well, I just heard something that's totally new to me, and my wife's listening in on this also. Bureau of Land Management wants to purchase this 100 acres for public access for the public to use. And now, if I understand this right, is the BLM is going to allow a certain small community to have their own private access to public land, but the rest of us are told, no, we can't have access. That Earlier, I could have sworn, uh, Chuck, I thought you said that uh, everyone has to have access, the public has to have access to this land, or it's all or no one, something to that effect, for ranches in Sonterra. Am I understanding this correct? And the other subdivision is going to have their own private access to a public park, to BLM land, is that correct? All right, Ron, it took me a minute to get back my, my camera working. Um, so based on Kevin's comment, uh, you, I do believe you heard correct. Um, our intention for public access on this is from the NCA. So basically down, uh, down river. Um, and so the way that lot is built, if you, if you looked at that, uh, Glenn, if you'll go back to that map, um, what, what Kevin is, is uh, referring to, you know, keep in mind, this is draft, this is pre-decisional. Uh, what he's referring to, if we were to fence off that, uh, wiggle your cursor right there, Glenn, by that, that little piece, uh, yeah. If we were to uh, fence off the main bulk of that and leave that uh, open back to that road, it's still public land, folks, if we were to acquire this. And so, so Kevin is, is saying that you could still access that piece from the Vista Rio Bonito, which is behind a, a gate to enter that community. So, and I don't want to paraphrase, I, uh, but I, I do know that, you know, these are complicated actions, uh, but, but I believe that's what Kevin's referring to, Ron. And uh, so uh, with that, uh, I, I'll give you, if you need to follow up on that, uh, please, please do. Thanks, Ron and Chuck. Jeff has his hand raised. Jeff, I'm opening up your microphone and you can begin speaking. Well, that, that, that discussion with Ron and, and Kevin and, and Chuck gives reason to consider whether the administrative access should be over there as well. Anyways, that being said, um, I got so engrossed in what Ron was talking about, I kind of lost track of where I was here. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, I know what I wanted to ask. So I was asking earlier about the covenants on this exist on this property, and does is, does the BLM have any concerns about the covenants on this property and? being part of the Vista Rio Benita subdivision? That's my question. Okay, Jeff, uh, you know, we we're, we were trying to follow a, a, a protocol of comments at the end, but I, I think since we've got a limited number of participants, unless Jill comes and tells me I'm going foul, uh, I'd like to, to engage with you on that one. Are we good, Jill? Yes, sir, we're good. Okay. so. Covenants are paramount and for the Bureau of Land Management and for this uh, property to become uh, part of the public ownership uh, managed by the Bureau of Land Management, there can be no covenants. And so there has been a tremendous effort uh, by the, the current landowner to, uh, to work with the current subdivisions to remove those covenants. Uh, without those removed, the BLM cannot obtain it. And so uh, we're, we're in concert, we have uh, presented, myself and Ruben went to a homeowners association meeting. And folks, if it weren't for this COVID, uh, folks in Sonterra, whoever may be on the phone, we would offer the same to come and visit with anyone. And uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, we do have the COVID right now, but that is paramount. And so it cannot, the, the Bureau of Land Management cannot obtain property that has restrictions on it. The other comment uh, that I'm hearing is, uh, can you move the administrative access over to, to uh, that north uh, piece of land that we've been discussing? We also have to recognize easements of record. And so there is an easement of record, and it's a pipeline that goes from Benito uh, Lake down to Fort Stan proper, and that's on record. So we cannot block access and deny access on that easement. So it's not as cut and dry. Are the odds that anybody's ever going to go in there and uh, work on that pipe? You know, you could uh, that could be questioned, but I cannot. Uh, we have to recognize that easement, and that's that's actually part of the property uh, as filed in the county courthouse. So that we we would have to accept for record. So that these get complex, and uh, these are all great suggestions. And, and I know that working together, folks, so we're going to figure out uh, ways that can make this mutually beneficial for the residents of your area, as well as the public and in the interactions with the Bureau of Land Management. Ron Pry has his hand raised as well. Ron, I'm opening up your microphone and you can begin speaking. I'd just like some more details on this private limited access is it a gate a road what if you folks at the blm worked out with the other subdivision to allow them their own little private access but ranches of Santerra is told that with our residents that we need we're going to have to drive i don't know what is it 10 miles whatever it takes to get there could you give me some more details on that, on what type of private access you're talking about? Are we talking about a locked gate? Are we talking about something else? Uh, I'm just stunned that BLM has land, is purchasing land here, and it's going to have a private gate or a, a pedestrian gate or something for a select group of people. I'm stunned. That was my comment. Uh, Ron, if it's okay with you, I'll, I'll treat that like a question and uh, try and respond to you. Uh, so Glenn's got the map back up. Uh, and, and so we're talking about now that is not an easement. That is actually physically part of that particular lot. So that is land and not an easement. And so if, if we were to fence this as platted, you know, you're going to have basically you're fencing in just a small easement. Keep in mind, in Vista Rio Benito uh, 2 subdivision, uh, basically where that, that darker shade of green starts, you have to go through a gate uh, to get into that. So it's not true public access. And so when we had conversations with the Homeowners Association, we were trying uh, uh, to, to be that good neighbor and figure out, okay, well, is, is, that, is that something that we can allow? No decision has been made wrong. It's important that you hear that. And, uh, you know, I, I believe you, uh, everyone heard Kevin and, and his uh, concerns and, and desires. Uh, at the end of the day, the decision record that uh, we generate after we go through this process of which uh, we're opening up for 30 day comments, we will take those comments, we will take suggestions, and we will make a final decision. So it, it would be pre-decisional for me to tell you, yes, we're going to allow something like that or no, we're not, because this is actually what this process is designed for. We want to hear from the public. And I think what you would hear, and, and, and I don't want to speak for anyone in the subdivision, and I really encourage you guys to speak out, is well, what does that look like? Ultimately, they would love to have access because uh, my recollection of the current uh, Vista Rio Benito 2 do not have access to the falls right now. So this in theory could benefit them if, if we allowed something like that to happen. So it's working with the, with the current landowners and, and the, uh, the subdivisions and, and uh, the folks that have been commenting on this as, as representatives of these subdivisions. We're trying to find the right balance here. Uh, no decision has been made. We haven't even acquired the property. You know, we've got a ways to go on that still. So. Uh, and we can't until we get through this process. So 
I guess I would answer with you is, is I want to hear from you, Ron, and, and others that are listening in, if there's a better way or if, if that's a, a big question mark that, uh, that you just could, uh, really want to flag, please do. Thank you, Ron. Okay, everyone, we have about 10 minutes left of tonight's meeting. You still have all that time to provide additional comments or questions, either verbally by raising your hand. If you're on the phone, you can press star nine, or you can provide your comments through the Q&A chat function and we can read them aloud. Just let us know how you'd like to proceed for the next 10 minutes. Okay, Jeff, I'm opening up your microphone. So you're probably getting to, we probably got a pretty small group here anymore, but uh, two things. I just wanted to close with my summary of, I just want to protect the property owners along Las Estrellas from increased traffic, increased litter, increased whatever. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, we've, Technically, the falls have always been private property, so we haven't gone there. Um, so I just want to emphasize that please protect the, the property owners in ranches of Santerra. We are more at risk than Vista Rio Benito. We are more at risk than any other property down there. Uh, that said, I want to thank all of you guys for letting us have this opportunity to talk and give you our concerns. I know Chuck's heard me on this. I know Glenn's heard me on this. So thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. That's all I've got. Thanks, Jeff. And we appreciate your continued involvement in this project. Would anyone else like to provide a statement or a comment? Please raise your hand or chat it to us through the Q&A chat feature. If you're on the phone, press star nine and you can open up your microphone. Hi, Mark. I am going to open up your microphone and you should be able to begin speaking. Hi, Mark Heinz Duber, Ranch in South Santerra. I live on Las Estrellas. I had a question if we submit um, documents to you guys um, through the mail or whatever. Are we allowed to submit uh, specifications and examples of fencing that we might like to see collectively from our? Um, uh, respective homeowners associations and will you consider those specifications and examples in um, your fencing solutions to the area thank you i'll go ahead and take a um a, a shot at that and and great question this is ruben and sorry my uh my video is not currently working at the time um, oh, there it goes. All right. Uh, the answer is absolutely. Um, I think you, you hit the nail on the head here when it comes to this process. Um, this is exactly what we need um, when it comes to input from uh, the public and, and you as a, as a uh, adjacent landowner. So absolutely get that to us. We'd love to see uh, what you guys visualize. Uh, again, um, this is trying to be a good neighbor, working with the public, working with the private landowners, and then of course, uh, again, making sure we're making good decisions the first time. Uh, taxpayer dollars are very important to us and we want to make sure uh, that we're making good decisions with that. So yes, absolutely. And we really appreciate you bringing that up. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. We have about six more minutes. Um, we still have some time to accept your comments or questions through the Q&A chat feature or by using the raise hand feature. If you're joining us by phone, please press star nine.
as a follow-up to the previous question regarding providing some plans for fences and such, those can also be uploaded through the project's e-planning website. If you want to provide a formal comment that way, instead of sending them through the mail, you can submit them electronically and we will accept them that way as well. We are still accepting your comments and questions for the next three minutes. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're joining by phone, if you wish to provide a comment or a question, or you could provide comments or questions through the Q&A chat feature located at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We have a little bit over a minute left today. I do want to thank you for your engagement today. I feel like we've had a pretty productive conversation. Um, we are recording all your comments and statements. They will be part of our decision file as well as part of our formal comments that we received. We appreciate your time and taking time away from your families and your personal lives to join us today and assist us in ensuring that we can have enough information to make a well-informed decision for our decision makers. I'll go ahead and hand this over to Chuck. And unless we have any other last minute questions, Chuck, you're on. Thank you, Jill. Uh, I just wanna thank everybody that's been on with us. Uh, it's been two hours. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. and. Uh, it, it, as they say, it takes a village. And uh, for, for those of you uh, members of the public that have joined us, I can't thank the BLM staff behind the scenes enough. Uh, you, you've heard from Ruben and I, but I've got a room full of folks uh, or, or folks in remote locations that have been available. And so I thank my staff. I, I actually think that draft EA that uh, we've uh, given to you to review is a, it's a pretty good effort. Is it perfect? No. That's where we need your help. And, and so please get those comments. 
as you, as you can see, anytime, uh, anytime we propose something like this, uh, it, it puts you into an, an awkward position uh, with, with some folks and, 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 and it may benefit others. But at the end of the day, what we're after is, is trying to convert this piece of private property that uh, has been offered up to us because we know the value. We know how much use it currently gets. We know there's a trespass issue in it and we think we can uh, effectively manage, uh, manage that area. Uh, I wanna close out with uh, those members that have hung with us and, and thank you for doing that. Uh, I think this is time well spent. I also want you to know that you can reach out at any time. We don't have to have a public uh, session. If you want to call me or any of my staff, uh, just call uh, this the, our front number, and, and I'll I'll say this. So if you got a pencil handy, five seven five six two seven zero two seven two. That'll get you to the front desk. You can ask for anybody you've talked to today or just say, hey, I want to visit with somebody about this acquisition. We want to be very transparent. We, we want you to participate in this. And uh, with that, I'm going to let everybody go. Enjoy the rest of their evening. And, and for, by all means, please stay uh, healthy and safe. Appreciate everybody. Good night.